So, good morning, everybody, and we have Lamore Kessem with us, uh, and uh, Lamore is from uh, RSA, the Security Division of EMC, and this is their Fraud Action Research Labs over in Israel, and they're good enough to be with us each and every week. Today, Lamore will be talking about the Citadel Trojan as a game changer in the cybercrime arena. Lamore, take it away. Okay, thank you, Joe. So, uh, as you were saying, I'm going to speak about the Citadel Trojan, and I'll explain why I think it's such an important piece of malware in the underground today. Um, so, I want to introduce this powerful Trojan called Citadel, a universal spyware system. And I want to tell you about it because it's much more than just a very sophisticated tool. It's going to be, or already is, a game changer in the cybercrime arena. This Trojan surfaced in January 2012. It uh, became very quickly known in the underground. It's defined as a banking Trojan, uh, mainly because it was built over this uh, exposed source code of the Zeus Trojan. This malware is being developed, it's being used for cybercrime and sold by a Russian-speaking cybercrime gang. So we know a lot of such gangs and we know a lot of them have Trojans and a lot of Russian-speaking people program them. And what's so special about this one now? So what we're looking here is at a development team that is really interesting. They're a team of professionals. They're very skilled, they're sophisticated. They have experience uh, where they have said they've used the Trojan for their own purposes, meaning they also deal in cybercrime. And they have come up with business models that are very interesting. So this gang went and took all the best of fraud as a service models and built and priced the Citadel Trojan as one main software kit with plugins that they sell separately and that's a very profitable model for them. Just the basic kit goes for about $2,400, and then every different uh, plugin can go for about $500, depends what it is. Uh, they're very aggressive in terms of how they're selling Trojans. They're running sales campaigns and forums. They're selling it to uh, cyber criminals, giving discounts. They're giving, uh, bringing a friend incentive. They have a lot of interesting uh, methods of marketing this. And the most important thing that's actually a differentiator for this Trojan is that this team is providing excellent customer support. They're, they're giving service information sharing. They have built a CRM, a customer relation management, to for their customers, complete with a discussion board for cyber criminals, you know, about half the Trojan, to come and exchange ideas, give each other tips, garner partnerships. This whole CRM has been an advertising space as well that they give only to those who offer very high-end crime services. So they have like three spots or four spots that they sell for a lot of money for those who want to advertise on the CRM. They also have a ticketing system and where people can report issues or ask for uh, questions or whatever. And if they want a new plugin to be developed, other people can vote on it. And then the development team charges 50% of the final cost and delivers the plugin. So if you can imagine, Joe, any other software you own giving you this level of customer service experience and saying, well, Joe, if you need this specific plugin for your software and other people here agree, we're going to make it for you ASAP. So these people are very uh, interesting so far. Yeah, I tell uh, you, they, it sounds like they've got a real handle on a business model there. They really do. They're doing amazingly well in managing this operation. And the Trojan in itself, the code, is just everything Zeus was and a lot more. They've been fixing it up. They've made it as sophisticated as the Spy Eye Trojan, which has a lot of plugins and a lot of interesting features. Um, without all the technical configuration that people usually need, they're helping everybody a lot to set everything up. And they've refreshed the interface, they, they added control options uh, and revamped it. And they regularly fix all the bugs and add things and communicate their work in a lot of details. They seem to be very professional. And uh, the way they, they write all the interesting details is very elaborate. Uh, one of the new models they have uh, introduced in, uh, in March, when they introduced their spring edition, as they call it, was called Card Swipe, uh, which uh, uses a, the LUN algorithm in order to grab payment data right out of the... Uh, encrypted communication and the wind socket traffic. So they're really putting a twist on things on how they've been done until now. Well, I, I would yeah. I would think Lamore and, and maybe you you know better than this since you guys are watching this twenty four seven 
But if they're going to be so uh, efficient and proficient at what they're doing, it would seem uh, to me uh, at, that raising the level of their business model to the extent that they have, they're also la raising their level of exposure for people to know who they are. True. Yeah, so. They are also uh, running that sort of risk. And they're also not keeping the development team uh, very strictly small. Like, they don't mind putting more people on the project. Uh, but so far, we're seeing that they have nice encryption. They have, you know, they put a lot of uh, effort into securing their Trojan in ways that will block out security. Um, I was mentioning earlier a blog that I was going to speak about that uh, they have arranged for so some sort of a DNS rerouting where they really manage to isolate the infected PC from, re from reaching any sort of security and any sort of uh, antivirus by blocking six, over 650 different URLs that could be a scanning, you know, from all the most popular antivirus to antivirus uh, software that's offered, let's say, in Germany or in Russia and everywhere. Well, we're going to take a short. We're going to take a short break here, Lamar, uh, and we're going to come back with more on the Citadel Trojan and Lamar Kessem from RSA, the Security Division of EMC, and their Fraud Action uh, Research Labs over in Israel. Uh, we'll be back right after this break. <laughs> 